And now a new one from Netflix that's well-paced with clever, coherent action, a meaningfully diverse cast of characters, and a compelling, forward-looking storyline with exactly enough mythos to be interesting without being draggy and more or less has a conventional three-act structure and an ending with a real central character arc and actually got all the way to completion as a movie instead of being unnecessarily stretched out into a promising but overlong season of TV with a pointless cliffhanger. I, are, are we sure this is a Netflix thing? Okay, so what you got here is Highlander, sans the explicit supernaturalism, updated for the post-9-11, post-war on terror, post-Call of Duty, retool every high concept into some kind of special forces unit version of sci-fi fantasy, based on a graphic novel by Greg Rucka and Leandro Fernandez, and directed by Gina Prince-Blydewood. With Charlize Theron, Matthias Schoenarts, Marwan Kanzari, and Luca Marinelli as a team of globe-hopping mercenaries for hire, whose effectiveness is owed to their being unkillable, immortal beings whose rapid healing ability is of unknown, unexplained origin. The three men being several centuries old respectively, while Theron's Andromache, or Andy, is apparently older than, like, recorded time, and as the story opens, she's actually getting a little tired of the whole routine, especially now that the omnipresent 21st century camera technology makes it increasingly difficult for them to move around undetected. In fact, as it happens, they have recently been detected by the forces of a sinister, uh, hold on, let's bring up the big board of geopolitically inoffensive movie bad guys. Multinational Pharmaceutical Corporation, which wants to harvest their superhuman DNA for medicine but really weapons or something, and which opts to strike right at the same point that Kiki Lane is a young soldier in Iraq killed in action, wakes up surprisingly alive as the first new immortal in a while, necessitating that Andy interrupt her moment of self-doubt in order to bring her and thus the audience up to speed on everybody's backstory and the mechanics of the hoped-for franchise. Uh, try not to act shocked when a certain percentage of characters get kidnapped into a high-rise building and the others have to go arm up and save them. Yeah, so as one is wont to expect of a Netflix action pickup, what the old guard lacks in overall originality, it mostly aims to make up for in the details. You've seen people with healing powers fight their way through a big lethal battle or get back up seemingly after dying in Wolverine or Deadpool movies, but not with this same glib precision. You've seen the superheroes as tactical team thing, but not quite so heavy on the tactical part. You've seen Charlize Theron beat the shit out of people and rock the hot mom at the gym who doubles up on arm day look, but I mean, why would you not want to see it again? And it's also refreshing to see them breeze right past the expected tedious aspects of the world building and mythology stuff simply by deciding that the characters themselves really wouldn't know how this all works, and to keep things manageably contained and character focused instead of trying to artificially inflate the stakes to end of the world level since, look, your heroes can't be killed and they live forever, so if it was possible to save or remake the world, wouldn't they have just done that already? So instead, this is a compact story about characters we like who are cool and interesting versus bad guys we don't like who want to kill them and we don't want that to happen and we'd also probably like it if Andy would eventually get over her bad mood so she can kick entertaining ass again by the end and that's enough you know that that's a movie toss in a solid accept or refuse the call arc for Lane the highly appreciative upfront and unapologetic love story playing out with Kenzari and Marinelli's characters which pays off in easily the film's most entertaining non-action beat and the welcome confirmation that Prince Blythe proves herself more than a capable action director and yeah this is a real winner of a film it does take a few stumbles now and then though not many that aren't part of the expected buy-in for current zeitgeist of action filmmaking. You know, even as a one-off, it feels a bit like some fat would have been trimmed in the downtime and it made it all the way to theaters. And while one appreciates the don't think too hard about it flippancy it treats its mythology with otherwise, the inherent difficulty of trying to create any stakes in a scenario where the good guys can't be killed, the just because convenience of a minute extra element of tension that does get inserted towards the end feels like a bit of a reach. Also, without spoiling, there's an extra beat to one character's backstory that perhaps unavoidably one it comes up does serve to make them significantly more interesting, but also introduces unresolved details into the other story that are so much more interesting than the actual plot of the film that I did kind of find myself repeatedly thinking, yeah, okay, but that other thing you brought up is obviously going to come back, and you know, because you spent the money to visualize it, so where is it? When I should have been focusing on the plot at hand, but you know, only a couple of times. 
Otherwise, this is a clever, slick, progressive-minded, yet also brutally violent, frequently kick-ass action film. They clearly want it to be a franchise. I'd certainly watch another one. Given it 7 out of 10, have some fun with it.